<laughs> my words are hard. Who the fluff knows if that's going to be uh, anything. I hope so because it took a long time to film. We shall see. Welcome to another video. Today it is something slightly different. It's a styling video. I had so much fun styling up the Melilo shirt in 11 different ways, I think it was, when I made it back over the summer that I thought I would like to do something similar with some other pieces that I've made that I haven't technically shown you in a lookbook yet. So I picked out my Mulberry Cobra Corsage pieces. I've made three. I have the Deer and Doe Brewer shirt, which I am wearing, a three quarter circle skirt, and the Butterick 5951 1940s-ish style dress. I had eight meters of this Mulberry Viscose Chalet from Lady McElroy. I managed to squeeze all three of those pieces out of that eight meters. I got a couple of hair scrunchies as well, which I haven't brought down today, but would be a good addition to this mini capsule wardrobe. When I decided to do this lookbook, I picked this print and then I had a look at the colors that were in this print and tried to pick complementary pieces that would work with it. There is one other print that I've included, but the rest of the things that I've got behind me are solid so obviously works really well. I literally took this and looked at the colours and thought you know what let's pick out the greens, let's pick out the burgundy mulberry tones and let's pick out the gold and tan tones that this has with the cream flowers as an accent. So I have 20 pieces including two pairs of boots, one pair of shoes, two belts, one jacket, one cardigan, two dresses, four jumper or two jumpers and two kind of roll neck type tight jumper-ish tops. I've got two shirts, one waistcoat, three skirts and a pair of jeans. That's 20 items total. I have tried to combine them in every way that I could think of and I have ended up with quite a few combinations. There are obviously more combinations than the ones that I've actually shown you because I, if I paired all of the plain items together there would be way more looks and lots of the plain items would work really really well together but I wanted to try and keep it based around the Cobra Corsage. Obviously the shoes and belts are shop bought. There are two of the roll neck jumpers and a pair of jeans are ready to wear from next. There is also my 100% cashmere carmine jumper from Lily Silk. Mum has knit the cardigan and the jumper but everything else I have made. So I'm going to talk you through the pieces really really quickly and hopefully I will be including some cutaways of that particular piece being worn with all of the other pieces mixed in. First up we have the Sorrento jacket from the Sew Over It Summer Dreaming ebook. You can't buy this pattern individually, you do have to buy the entire ebook book. I personally love this pattern. I haven't made anything else from the ebook yet but I will do but this is my absolute favourite. I have done a video on how to fully line it which you can see up here. I am just a fan of fully lined jackets. It doesn't, it's not necessary. This pattern is designed to not be fully lined but it, for the at the very least I like a fully lined sleeve. And I've gone fancy with this one and we've got some mustard and cream striped silk which is nice and slippery and does mean that this jacket is very easy to get on and off over all of the pieces that I have been showing you today. The only thing I didn't wear this with was the cardigan. It does fit over the cardigan but it is, you, you do have to like properly tweak the sleeves to kind of do that so I wanted sort of like ease of getting in and out of things but this was my little cover-up I think this would work very well for this time of year especially if I added a scarf for a little bit of extra warmth one of the things I could have subbed this out for was my tan wool version of this but I have lent that to Lady McElroy and it's at the knitting and stitching show at the moment so you're getting the green denim version a little crop jacket worked really really well with all the looks that I put together from this capsule next up we have the Harton cardigan which is a Kim Hargreaves pattern that mum has knit for me four or five times now. The original pattern comes with a square neckline. I'm not a huge fan of that. I much prefer this rounded neckline and mum has adapted that for me. This is in a merino lurex blend wool in a plum colour and it works perfectly with the Mulberry Cobra Corsage. It actually probably would look quite nice over this as well but I, that wasn't an option that I tried but this works so so well with all the other pieces I have picked. 
as I mentioned at the beginning, this is the Butterick 5951 dress. I love this dress. I really, really love this dress. I love it in this colour. This is the third one of these that I've made. I will be making more. The red version that I've made of this, which is included in the Sew Along, which you can find up here, would actually look really nice in this collection as well, I think. The kind of brighter reds work surprisingly well with Mulberry. So that is something else that I could have added, but I was trying to limit myself to 20 pieces because otherwise this could have been a very long video. <laughs> Next up we have the Vogue 9076 which you can find a couple of review videos for. I am going to be doing a sew along for this and I will be doing that next month in a gorgeous navy viscose with fruit all over it and piping. There may even be a lookbook around the navy colourway but I love 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 this print. It is called petal dance or it's called a few different things on a few different websites there's quite a lot of colors of this available this particular one obviously has the mulberry background with the white petals and a little mustard fleck in it so it works really well with the colors that i've picked i'm actually considering getting some of this on the other colorways because of how well it mixes with cobra corsage and i do have a lot of cobra corsage in my wardrobe as you guys know i also think this is because this is such a small and ditzy print i do think it will work really well with other larger prints i believe one of the rules of print clashing which i am no expert at is to add a small print with a large print the difference in scale can make the really different types of prints work together but as i said I'm definitely no expert. I just love how this looks by itself and also as a blouse with the mulberry skirt over it. Next up we have this darker mulberry roll neck with button detail on the sleeve. This was from Next many many years ago. I love this. It's in a rib jersey. The Paola t-shirt is very very similar. There's a couple of other patterns that are very similar to this roll neck tight jersey tops. I do actually have some stripy jersey from Lady McElroy that I'm going to be making one of these from in December and again it's in the right kind of colorway that I think would look really good with this collection so that could be something else to add in. Some stripes, I as, as we know stripes polka dots and checks are all neutrals and will go with everything so yeah a striped one of these would have looked really really good with this collection but i decided to go for this plain one because i thought there would be a lot of versatility in it next up we have my lily silk carmine cashmere 100 percent cashmere jumper i worked with lily silk earlier this year and there's a video all about that up here if you would like to have a look at it i talk about adding in luxury basic pieces to your wardrobes like this particular jumper. I think this is really, really versatile. I really liked it with the skirts. Again, I didn't show all of the plain tops with all of the plain skirts. I was trying to keep the Cobra Corsage at the forefront, but I do think this is a really, really versatile piece. I can wear this by itself. I can wear it over other t-shirts for extra layers of warmth. I also wear this under some of my dresses with the giant sleeves on them. Those dresses are really difficult to get cardigans over the sleeves of, so something like this underneath gives you that extra added layer of warmth and just feels absolutely divine. This is so so soft. I love this so much. I'm a huge advocate of luxury basics being added to your wardrobe for their versatility and I do wear this one an awful lot. We have another mum knit piece. This is the Ruffle Schmuffle Jumper from Zanti Knits. Again, I will list this in the description down below. It wasn't meant to have two ruffles on it, but somehow we ended up with, well, somehow when mum knit this, she ended up with one ruffle bigger than the other, and it was really noticeable. I came up with the plan to knit two more ruffles that were identical to the ones already on the jumper, and then just put them on the opposite sides. So we've got two extra ruffly ones on, on um, the front, and then the slightly less roughly ones are on the back. I love this. It is a 100% wool jumper so it is incredibly itchy. My skin does not tolerate this well. I really liked it with this little shirt underneath of it. I thought that looked really cute and again this would go with all of the plain skirts and I think it would actually look quite nice over some of the dresses as well because it is cropped and the waist comes in but I decided not to put again the plain too many planes together because you guys kind of get the idea. I was trying to show off the print. 
love this jumper and again I absolutely am incredibly lucky that my mum is willing to knit like things like this for me. Another ready to wear piece, again this is very reminiscent of the named Paola t-shirt. This looks great with all of the skirts, it looks great with the cardigan, it looks great with the waistcoat over the top of it. It's really really versatile because it's so fitted and slim lined. This is something I also wear under dresses to add an extra layer of warmth so that I can wear some of my dresses into some of the colder months. Absolutely love this, we'll be trying to recreate some of my own but we all know how I feel about sewing up solids I am not that much a fan of it so I tend to buy things like this because I think this cost me 18 pounds and it's been in my wardrobe for about seven eight years now and I absolutely love it. Next up is the Bruyere shirt which I am wearing. I really like this. I love that it has a waistband and then the peplum that comes from that. I'm not usually a peplum kind of girl but this one isn't like a sticky outy peplum. It's it's shaped over the hips. I was a little bit worried about this one over the jeans but I do think I like it. I am also planning on making some leggings out of a wet look or leather faux leather look stretch jersey that I got from Girl Charlie when they were still open. It's actually in this colour. I have some black of that particular fabric as well and I plan on making some leggings with that. Again, I think with the outfit that I've got on that would look absolutely awesome. Very pirate-esque. I, <laughs> I am loving the pirate-esque theme. One of the things that I, one of the outfits that I would have liked to have tried but again I ran out of time was this shirt with the super giant sleeves and this waistcoat over the jeans. I think that would look really really cool as well but, but again it would have been a combination of planes which is not what we were trying to go for with this lookbook. I have tried this shirt on with this waistcoat and the skirt that matches it and I really loved how that looked. This is the Vogue 9345. I am going to be doing the five pieces from one pattern with this particular pattern. Hopefully I will be refining this shirt. This one I fully lined and just did little slits up the side but when I redraft the pattern because I will need to redraft it I'm actually going to measure my high hip measurement to find out how much flare I need to add in that area so that this will button up properly the whole way down and not have to have the little side slits in it to make it fit over my giant hips but I really like this one. Then we have the waistcoat. Now what pattern number is it? It is this pattern number. I cannot remember that number off the top of my head but I really actually like how this waistcoat has come out. I like the 5193 waistcoat that I make that buttons up all the way but this fabric definitely wouldn't have taken a buttonhole which is why I went for this style and a hook and eye. I am planning on making a few more of these and I'm planning on making some without the collar on it. I do love the collar but I think it would be interesting to try it without the collar as well to sort of see how that kind of looks. It might be sort of a little bit sleeker, let's say. I really like how this looks over the dresses by itself. That's one of the reasons I haven't really been wearing my waistcoats. I've made quite a few and I haven't really worn any of them because I was thinking I had to have matching bottoms that went with them. I love the matching skirt that goes with this, don't get me wrong, but putting it on with some of the dresses and then the non-matching skirts with the belt over the top of it. I love that look and I have to say thank you to Shirin and I will list her Instagram in the description down below because it, I think it was first her that I saw put a belt over a waistcoat. I know Rachel Maxey's done it as well so it's definitely inspiration from the two of them but I really like how it looks and I know belts aren't for everybody but I like them. I have a lot of them and I want to wear them so I really have enjoyed styling this waistcoat up in this way. And then we're on to the skirts. So this is the three quarter circle skirt. There is a full sew along for that. Might have told you that already. I had eight meters of this fabric and I knew I wanted a top, a skirt and a dress out of it. I love how this has turned out. It's so twirly without being super super full. I think it's really really pretty. I actually really like it over the dress as well because it gives the uh, the, dress, the, the the skirt of the dress gives it uh, like a petticoat effect so it gives it some extra oomph and fullness. I think it's gorgeous. I love this and I love how well it goes with all the other colours. We have my green denim. Now it's a 174 one pattern. They've changed the number of it and I've completely forgotten the original and the new number that they've they've listed it under. I absolutely love this skirt. I've made mo loads of them. I love the giant pockets on it. I do not like the bodice of that dress. I have made three of them so far and I think I'm going to butcher them all for parts and turn them into skirts. I just don't like the bodice on that dress. The 
stupid darts are stupid we've been through this but this is a really versatile piece it goes obviously it's the same denim as the jacket so i really like that it's kind of giving like a really relaxed suit look it also goes really really well with the cobra corsage mulberry so yeah very happy with this again this would look great with all of the solid tops and jumpers but i didn't style it that way because you guys get the picture <laughs> And the final skirt is one that matches the waistcoat that I'm wearing. This again is a three quarter circle skirt. I made this out of this fabric, which kind of looks like Hessian, but it's actually raw silk and it's called summer silk. And I got it from Stitch Fabrics. A lot of you guys, when I made this up said, actually, you know what? It could also look like wool, which is why I didn't think it would be out of place in an October lookbook. I know it's a really light color. <laughs> I haven't spilled on anything on either of these pieces as yet and I'm quite really hoping that I won't because this is a dry clean only item of clothing but I'm really really pleased with how it's made up and I'm really really pleased with how it looks with all of these pieces. Again I've styled it with the cream shirt and it looks amazing and with some nice tan high heels it actually looks very summery so I do think this is a really versatile mini suit as it were. I mean you know two piece i do think i can get a lot of wear out of this over the colder months because it is quite as thick as it is or as thick looking as it is if silk is warm it's gonna it's gonna be good i really like this and then the final piece is the skinny black jeans that i got from next they are the super high-waisted very very stretchy jeans i have them in black a mid denim blue and also a gray colorway i don't enjoy making trousers unless they're giant full-legged wide-leg trousers the idea of making a stretch skinny jeans does not appeal especially when i can find pairs that work as well as these ones do they're very very comfortable they're not quite as high-waisted as i would like them to be but i do have a super long torso i haven't made any trousers as yet if i had made the lander pants out of this green denim they could have been included i also have some tan wool suiting that I'm planning on making a skirt trousers and a jacket out of I have already made the waistcoat that would have worked really well with this particular colorway of the cobra corsage but again I've only made the waistcoat and I wanted to have like a two-piece so which is why I included this cream set instead there are lots of different trouser options that I would have liked to include but I did want to put a trouser option in because as rarely as you see me wearing trousers I do actually enjoy wearing trousers so I'm very pleased that I did put these black jeans in and I think they have worked really really well with these pieces again it would look really really good with a lot of the solid pieces but I was running out of steam towards the end of the styling session because I had been doing it for about two hours <laughs> I've really enjoyed myself this afternoon. It's been a lot of fun at picking out the pieces that I wanted to include. It's been a lot of fun putting the outfits together, seeing what did work and what didn't, and making notes about the little tweaks I can make to projects going forward to make them more versatile. As I've mentioned, adding that extra little bit of length to skirts when I make them as just skirts and making sure that my dress lengths are, you know, 28, 29 inches, just so that I have more flexibility for pairing dresses with skirts as tops because we all know that I love making dresses and I love making skirts and then I just don't ever wear my skirts because I have nothing to pair with them so if my dresses were double as tops that gives me a giant wardrobe to play with which would be really really cool so yeah it's been really really fun I hope you've enjoyed this video I really enjoyed this afternoon it's been a lot of fun it has been a lot of work but it has been a lot of fun and I get to play dress up which is something that I love doing and all the clothes all the pretty pretty clothes. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!